Hi everyone, welcome to a very exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. They're always exciting to me. I always say they're exciting. On this episode, I am delighted to be talking with the comics creative team of David Ebeltoft and Jordan Hart. David, Jordan, thank you for jumping in and thank you for bringing the spinner rack and the film posters. I love it. Thanks for having us, Jason. We really appreciate the space and yes, the space to show off our awesome Jordan's uh, spinner rack definitely beats the film posters, but uh, is that <laughs> what what pattern is that on that chair back there? I'm just curious because oh. I'm getting like major extraterrestrial vibes. Just curious, <laughs> just curious. <laughs> yeah, I never saw the oh, green man. there. Now I cannot see it. Wait, well, is this a... a Rorschach? Is that what this is? I know, right? <laughs> um, Jason, I appreciate it. So this is actually like a design pattern. You know, if if there was an interior designer in the house he or she would be able to uh, tell you what that pattern is, but it's just some cool. random, random thing that is now very alien-esque. You are correct. <laughs> my, my, my office, my office experience has changed. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to do my that pro to you. My probing worries <laughs> with my back to my chair have totally <laughs> amplified. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll let you know if anything strange goes on behind you. you or anything you. like that. Yeah. Uh, so, David, you're primarily known, if I'm correct, in the world of film with, uh, let me make sure I get these titles right, Here Alone right. and Blood for Dust being two of those major films that you've worked on. Yeah, you're correct. And uh, Here Alone, really, really small indie film, came out in 2017 on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, way more feels than flesh eating. We like to call ourselves like an emo zombie film. Um, we came out during that definite heyday of uh the walking dead within television yes mm -hmm. with, with with comics here um and so yeah we really went more of like a magnifying glass on what it is to survive and very very depressing actually a very depressing <laughs> uh <laughs> emotional film and then blood for dust it's actually mm -hmm. a crime thriller starring kit harrington john snow from game of thrones josh mm -hmm. lucas he's a big yellowstone dude uh, we have Scoot McNeary and Stephen Dorff. We have a really great cast, but it's a crime thriller that's sort of being pegged as Breaking Bad meets Fargo, which over the moon about that comes out. Oh, my gosh, in a month, April 19th. So yeah, it hit, nice. hit most of the places where you can rent um, and it'll hit about 100 theaters nationwide. And then I think over the summer, that's when it'll hit the big streaming platforms, uh, probably Hulu or Paramount Plus or Netflix. So unsure about the actual one, but that's the next one coming out. So, yeah. Wonderful. This may be the first film promotion I've done and been able oh. to talk about. So that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. 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 Exclusive. I mean, it's honestly the first time I've really talked about it. We just got the the heads up. Um, yeah. Just a week ago. So yeah, it's oh, exciting. Nice. Very and, nice. um, and yeah, it's really, really exciting. And I know you're going to turn over to Jordan, but yes. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan's definitely one of the reasons why I'm able to be here um, chatting about comics with you, which is really, really cool. And he sort of opened that door, that comics door and, and allowed me in, which was really, really great. So um, just wanted to give that a little props before you turned it over to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And lovely pivot to comics. I love it. Jordan, you're known for ripple effects, uh, Terminark. Did I say that right? I hope. Did, uh, you did. Correct. And yep. doppelganger as well. Correct. And the two of you have combined your powers, Captain Planet style, to create a series called The Cabinet, which uh, is yes. fascinating stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We we certainly have. Uh, I think the films David talked about and my comics that you just talked about, uh, if you isolated them individually or if you put them all together, they would either scenario would be nothing like The Cabinet. And I think that I think that is uh, what excites us the most about working on it um you know david from the film side you know he has to worry about budgets you know as a writer we can write whatever we want it's like mm -hmm. well this one sentence could cost a million dollars or you know so <laughs> uh him coming to comics uh is to, not to speak for him but just recalling how we we teamed up it you know really uh opens the floodgates of creativity you can write whatever you want uh and and get it on the page and that's what i love about comics so it was great um for him to have that experience and then for me uh of working with david he's just such a great writer uh and especially like um the conversational uh moments and and overall you know um uh, elements of the story that's that's all david i mean he's just so good at that and that's what his film background brings and i mean aside from great ideas and 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 all of that as well but you know 
I'm much more of a uh, action type writer. I would I would say Dave Dave could uh, Dave could attest to that. So when he comes in and brings in uh, you know those great little nuanced moments, those hilarious little things like Trent having a wrench that he can't think of a name for, and that becomes a running a running gag and all the issues. Um, it's just been so fun to work on. It's just every day is, is makes me laugh. So it's been a great partnership. And it's a mixture of uh, fascinating things. As I said, adventure, you have a cabinet from the 17th century. We have post-apocalyptic Cold War setting. I mean, it, all, all the things. I feel like I'm doing like a Stefan talk about some club. But it's it's an amazing <laughs> uh, assemblage of ideas. So curious about how the two of you connected and what the process has been like working on this. Yeah, Jordan, do you want you want me to start the connection? Yeah, I was gonna say you can okay. you can take that. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, we are sort of like Voltron. Like I'm sort of the lower half, and Jordan's sort of the upper <laughs> half, and, and we we really we really can't work well um, <laughs> without each other. And um, we met. I mean, basically, we were sort of internet pen pals, uh, which is which is pretty great and sort of rare nowadays. But um, we met because Jordan was writing a screenplay. This was at the time when my screenplays were starting to break into the indie world. Um, and I was starting to see how depressing it can be to write for budgets and write for producers and it's still exhilarating. But, um, and him and a buddy wrote this great little comedy script and they're like, could you give notes? And I was like, heck yeah, I'll give you notes. And so I read it, laughed as well um, and gave him a few notes. And we just sort of struck up a friendship after that, which was really, really great. He'd send me his comic work. Um, at that time, Terminarch was coming out and he was just starting to um, develop Doppelganger, which was a four issue series, mini series. Um, so he'd sort of send me those scripts and then I'd send him my scripts that I was working on. And then we just fanboy out. We found out that we equally adored Buffy the Vampire Slayer and that we both had a hardcore crush on Sarah Michelle Geller for many, many years. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, as as one does uh, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you're a Scooby. So <laughs> we just start, we just started to connect over all things comics, uh, all things fandom, uh, really, really odd things because we're both from the Midwest. So uh, somewhere along this really great path, we decided or sort of decided to throw our hats into a creative ring together. We thought that it might be really cool to sort of pool all these great inspirations, pool all of our connections, pool all of our similarities um, into one sort of pot and see what we could cook up within the comics realm specifically. So, um, Jordan, should I hand it off over to you there after I sort of made a cooking analogy? Should I? Should I? Yeah, yeah, I was going to yeah, follow yeah, that yeah. analogy. That's a great <laughs> analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, uh, yeah, then it was like uh, the the test kitchen from there. We had all these ingredients or no, what is that? Iron Chef, whatever the show yes, is. They get yes. like a specific ingredient. They have to make a dish out of it. That yes. was the cabinet. We had all these things we love. Uh, the cabinet is real. Um, I saw it at the Getty Center Museum here in Los Angeles. Uh, I saw it in person when David and I were already trying to like figure out what we wanted to write. We knew we wanted to write something together. We just didn't know what. We had so many ideas. It was just this huge list of ideas. And I saw the cabinet. I was like, this thing looks haunted and creepy and huge. And I've never seen it. I texted David a picture. I'm like, yep, there it is. So we had we had all the things we love. We had the cabinet, and then now it's like, well, wh where do we go from here? Uh, so then we just kept throwing ideas out. Dave came up with like wanting to do an adventure stories, and and we loved it. And we thought setting the adventure story in 1991 was a great juxtaposition to the baroque nature of the cabinet. You know, like mm -hmm. if if this story was set in in you know the Gothic, medieval, Victorian age. Um, it would be great, but it would be a whole different mood and a whole different tone. And we thought the juxtaposition of dropping that into Saved by the Bell, basically, uh, was something that made us laugh. Mm -hmm. And and that's really like the goal of the cabinet. We'll just text each other randomly almost every day and just, hey, what if uh, they wore gothic tunics, our version of the Stormtroopers, the Blackguard, but they also wore Reebok pumps? I laughed. Sounds great. Let's do it. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it just is back and forth. And the the weirder we try to get the more it seems to work in some weird way i'm like i, I don't i don't know i don't want to i'm not going to question it but 
you know, ultimately our creative process is we try to make each other laugh and then we rely on our abilities as writers to weave the narrative and weave the character arcs and all that good writerly stuff uh, into the main idea that's making us laugh. And, and that's certainly a different process for me. And uh, it's been so fun to do. So I've, I've been loving it. Nice, nice. I now have this like Iron Chef inspired vision. I was going to follow that <laughs> metaphor and ask about the ingredients, the the kind of secret sauce oh, yeah. of fandom that you were including. But I, I think you mentioned a couple of those there: Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, Saved by the Bell, absolutely. Um, but I'm just picturing you now in a writer's room going, "Kohlrabi," and then you just like go to it. Totally. <laughs> Totally. Well, and and yeah and you know i i know we'll probably talk about her a lot more in length as we go on but really the true chef is chiara Ramondi, our italian artist that is just mm-hmm. knocking this out of the park mm-hmm. um jordan does a really really great job sort of explaining her process but i think one thing to just sort of throw in there is that we we do really cook up these great recipes for her and we yeah we do a lot of tasting um you know we we season we sprinkle but once once she whips it up with all of her out of the out of this world colors and neons and her very very expressive character work um sometimes we switch sometimes we switch the recipe we'll get the panels back from her and we'll be like wow that Mm -hmm, didn't mm -hmm. that didn't make us laugh when we were writing it and the way she interpreted it and elevated it now that that's really funny we should maybe incorporate that further down the road like let's build on what she just created a small character might become more of a bigger character or we might rewrite the dialogue to fit more of her style and more of her. So I, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's been really, really great to sort of not only cook everything up together, laugh together, um, drop Buffy references. I'm a Spike fan myself, Angel. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> but Spike fought for his soul. Angel was just cursed with it. We won't go there. But uh, but yeah, we'll just <laughs> drop those references in and, and, with, and we'll realize that Kiara then needs to sort of bring them full, full, full force and, and into a visual um, that we could never do. And so it's it's been a really great guide and a really great, um, she's been an amazing guiding force uh, throughout the process. Yeah, yeah. You, you've both spoken well to a couple of things that are just really cool about the comics medium, which is uh, one being you're limitless in terms of budget and the other being at least one other which is you get that collaboration. So you get to dream things up and then sort of put it out there. And then Kiara gets to interpret it and plate it and bring it back. See, I followed the metaphor there. You did. Yes, you did. Right. Yeah. Perfect. You We're did. trying. We're trying in each question. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, if I, I mean, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if I'm a reader out there and I, I'm thinking, well, what can I expect from this book? I know we have weirdness. I know we have humor, but anything else that would be part of the the sort of package deal? Yeah, David, you can, you can take that one, okay, too. Okay, I get the package You summarize yeah. it so succinctly. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I'll do a quick summary, and then I'll sort of um, talk a little bit more about our overall package deal for sure. Um, we follow Avni. She's our teen heroine. Um, and she has a sidekick who happens to be a towering six foot eight, uh, Midwest jock. Um, his name is Trent and they teleport, as we said, across a post cold war landscape. Um, so, you know, early nineties and they're collecting these bizarre relics, uh, which of me terms doodads. And, uh, they do this because they need to enact, uh, engage the arcane powers of a Baroque curio cabinet the cabinet um and uh they don't do it for fun they do it because avni made a little mistake teeny tiny mistake when she was younger she activated the cabinet and she thought she was going to release these really really great powers from the cabinet because the cabinet has the ability to do that but she was 11 you know she was a tiny teeny little gal and uh she made a mistake and unfortunately, that mistake unleashed a demon and accidentally slaughtered her parents. So, you know, she wants to fix that mistake. And luckily, she has the cabinet to do so. So she, her and Trent collecting all these relics, these doodads to enact the powers of the cabinet to correct her mistake. So that's sort of our, that's sort of our overall uh, elevator pitch. There was a lot of floors in that elevator to oh, cover because yes. that was pretty long. But but really, <laughs> we we have, we're 
at, at our heart, we are sort of a dramatic tale. We're a tale of righting a wrong. And, um, you know, we can talk about all the amazing comic characters throughout comic history that, that want to do that. We're not a revenge tale. We are an attrition tale. And what we've been finding uh, as we further get closer to Avni throughout these five issues is we start to realize that, you know, her main goal in life is to fix her past life and to fix something she doesn't have and her growing up is to uh basically um correct her own mistake and she's battled it with uh some some wit and some sarcasm sort of think like that clarissa explains it all sarcasm mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. as as we go along with those issues we're going to unpack that a little bit and we're going to realize that she's not an empty shell of a human being but she's just missing her shell she's missing that guiding force that she's wanted all these really really hard to get it back and so we deep we dip down into the feels for this so we also dip down into some darkness we have a lot of fun we have a lot of color but we got we like to look get a little dark as well because mm -hmm. we like to test Avni. she's our main character we have to you know put her on those dramatic ropes and then shake those ropes a little bit um so yeah i think if, if you're looking for a great tale of attrition that is sort of that awesome roller coaster ride of really really fun and really really you know some good laughs but also takes us down some of those dramatic emotional tunnels and tales i think we're for you love it love it yeah yeah <laughs> very very nice and on point i love it um oh, thanks yeah yeah and you have this teenage character that just has the voice of a teenage character there's that element of it there's the fantasy science fiction that's beautiful storytelling and also made beautiful by the imagery in the book. So uh, all sorts of good things in the mix, all sorts of good things. Did I miss anything before we talk about where readers can go to learn a little bit more, anything about the book, about the process that you'd like to mention before we close out with that question? Jordan, you want to talk um, about any of the process? Yeah, I, I will say, uh, I think what I'm most proud of, uh, is that this is a three person book. You know, you mentioned earlier that uh, collaboration is a huge part of comics. It is. I always liken making comics to being in a band. You have all the different members making one piece of art together. And uh, it could go great or it could go horribly. Really, de <laughs> really mm -hmm. depends on your attitude and the attitude of your bandmates or of, of your creative teammates. So, um, you know, David and I, 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 we had the most fun writing it and coming up with it. And we just needed to find someone who uh, was, you know, as brilliant uh, as Kiara is, but furthermore, as just funny and flexible and collaborative, you know, like we give Kiara extremely tight scripts. They are not loose. Like they are very tight with always you know this is the this is the architecture this is the blueprint change as you see fit and as david mentioned earlier we'll get we'll get her her pages and we're re rewriting all the time we're we're deleting a bubble just because we like love her art so much like no nope, covering too much get it out of there so it's like i try to tell that to anyone that wants to work in comics too it's like like, like it's all about collaboration and when you make your own concessions it's it's for the betterment of the book you know so like to have her on board with that and to have david on board with that it's just for me it's it's great and you know yeah we're a three-person book kiara um does pencils inks colors david writes does the story i letter design help with the covers and help write you know david really doesn't need any help it's more patting him on the back no, that's not saying, yep <laughs> it's like, yeah this is great so yeah we're, we're a three-person book and, and Kiara, this is kiara's first american comic um when we found her she was on, we found her on instagram under a hashtag uh -huh. uh, she had never done an american comic and she was still in art school in italy um i think she was 24 um so i mean she's a superstar already like people say yeah. she's up and coming no no no. she's <laughs> fully formed she is a fully formed creator so i mean he, it's just it's been awesome to watch her grow over this process of the five issues and it's just like um i'm just so excited to see you know where she goes she she can do it all and um yeah i don't know i'm just like i feel like david and i are just like the proud older, older brothers like trying not to cry 
you know, like when, when she's just handing these pages in because she's just so great. So, um, yeah, definitely um, follow her on Instagram and just stay tuned. I think she's she's is a force, but she's going to really be uh, a legend if if she wants to be. So we're very lucky to uh, to have her on the on our first American book. I mean, she, her first American book is that image that says it all. Like how That's many right. can say that that their first comic is an image comic? So you know, it's uh, it's great. And when you said that about up and coming, I was like, she's working at image. So this, yeah, yeah. amazing <laughs> yeah. stuff. And that yeah, also, totally. I, I love the wordless way that the book starts. There are just lots of panels to soak in. So you immediately get an impression of that art as well. I'm yeah. now picturing that there were like 20 word bubbles in there that got deleted <laughs> or something. <laughs> but, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe some captions, but, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned Instagram, and that's usually the place that I sort of close out. Uh, web spaces where people can connect with you, with the book, um, with Kiara, any of those sort of links that you'd like to mention. And then I know you're you're awaiting the release of issue three, but anything about the creative direction forward that you'd like to mention? Uh, yeah, I'll... Uh... You can find all of us on Instagram. Uh, I think the, the easiest way is if you go to the image Instagram page. They usually post about the cabinet every month and they'll hashtag all three of us on all of the cabinet posts. So you can find us there. Uh, our other our, uh, imprint uh, is Syzygy, which is uh, run by Chris Ryall, who's all, another legend in the industry um, from Lock and Key and running IDW. Um, so you can find us there as well. And uh, any Southern California convention I will be at, um, if not signing or at a booth or a panel, I'll be digging in a long box trying to fill my spinner rack. So uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I would probably spill. I could probably fill like 400 <laughs> spinner racks at this point, but we don't need to go. We don't need to go into that. It's confession time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to David about uh, where you can find him and what to expect uh, coming up next. In yeah, series. and um. Kiara's Instagram handle, I mean, you can search Kiara Ramondi, R-A-I-M-O-N-D-I, but I think her Instagram handle is O-C-Y-R-H-O-E-N. So it's yes. Oki Ren, um, O-C-Y-A-R-H-O-E-N. And yeah, definitely follow her for all the visual goodness. I'm on Instagram as well, david.ebeltoft. I am on Twitter. Um, even though it's a dumpster fire, there's a lot of really great people still there. And uh, it's been really, really fun to connect with a lot of individuals there. So I'm there, David Ebeltoft. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, I'm trying to think where else I am in the digital webs. I mean, let's just start there for, for simplicity's sake, I think, for sure. That works. That works. Yeah. And oh, I, oh your, your other question. I'm sorry, we missed your final question. Uh, issue two, three. Issue three. So issue three is coming out um, April 10th. Um, so definitely, I mean, we always recommend your LCS, get to your local comic book store, um, tell them that you want it. Uh, that's always the first part. Pre-orders are really, really great, um, especially as the series goes on. Um, and then we usually just point people to imagecomics.com. Uh, Obviously, our cabinet series is up there um, and you get a lot more fun things like what the order code is and fun things like that. Um, so yeah, that's sort, of the, that's sort of the boring skivvy, I think. That's sort of the boring details of it. Um, I'm trying to think, should we, should we, should we tease with anything in issue three? Yes. Jordan, or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah we're going to, we're going to, we're going to meet a new boisterous, uh, black guard character that I think everyone is, is going to love. Um, I mean, not to spoil anything that he's on the cover of issue spoil. four, which is, yeah. which is <laughs> out there already. So mm -hmm. he's, he's, how do you describe him, uh, David? Like Hordor meets the guy from Bloodsport, right? Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> what's, yeah. what's that yeah. like? <laughs> so my description for this gentleman, uh, yeah, goes all over the shop. But we, we really wanted to dive into the like the really loud, boisterous, uh, gargantuan, you know, large belly of like a roadie from like the Blizzard of Oz tour mm -hmm. meets mm -hmm. like willie nelson braided hair <laughs> but with like the warrior mentality of hodor for sure um yeah so yeah he's he, uh he's large he, he's sort of in charge um uh, but yeah he's hilarious the entire time so yeah that's great great character good good call jordan i like that 
Poster yeah. Boy 4, Issue 4. Yes, correct. <laughs> Cover yeah. A. Cover yeah. it. You'll see them. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, well, many thanks to you both. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the work and glad to have you back anytime as you're creating and working on projects and bringing all of the, the 90s nostalgia mixed in with all of the other elements that you bring to the page. Jason, thanks so much, man. Yeah. It's uh, been a pleasure. We obviously go off on a lot of tangents, so we'd love to talk more in the future. So thanks so much for giving us the space and the time today. Absolutely. Yes, thank glad you to so talk much. Anytime. Thank you.